can you differentiate between the two theories of for the origin of life primordial soup and deep sea vents because they both seem similar so uh the primordial soup theory is that in the very early uh, days of the earth when you had the newly formed earth which was formed out of the chaos of the inf- of the infancy of the solar system the the proto solar disk and all that so in the very early earth you had what is called the primal soup which is all these hot very hot swirling gases uh you had uh, carbon dioxide you had a, a whole mixture of gases uh you would have methane ammonia water vapor and, and many other things the temperatures were very high there was a lot of lightning and all that and it is out of this primordial soup that life emerged somehow right so that is the that's the uh experiment we spoke about last week i don't recall the name of the experiment ure teller or something like that so that was an experiment that sought to recreate the conditions of the very early earth in a test tube kind of apparatus you know in a in a lab apparatus and they were able to show that if you create the same kind of environment inside the apparatus you can uh, very very quickly you find the emergence of amino acids and all that so that is the primordial soup theory that it is out of such conditions in the very early earth that life emerged so that's one theory the other theory like you mentioned is deep sea vents so what are deep sea vents so we know that the earth has a crust below the crust there is the mantle below that there is the magma layer the magma layer is the molten rock and below the magma layer at the core of the earth you have this very solid uh core which is mostly metallic right nickel iron all that so that's the that's the cross section of the earth let's let's take a look at what it looks like one second let me um share my screen so that you get an idea of what i'm talking about the earth structure if it ever loads okay so what you have is the crust the upper crust the lower crust the outer core and the core and of course there is the magma layer the mantle inner core all that so this is what the cross section of the earth looks like now we have what's known as plate tectonics uh, which says the which is a phenomenon in which uh, the crust of the earth moves because of the convection of the magma layer below and from time to time there there are fractures and fissures in the crust of the earth and the magma comes out and that's what causes volcanism and things like that now there are lots of underwater volcanoes under sea volcanoes and uh, you see the same kind of volcanic activity under the ocean these are called deep sea vents so let me show you what deep sea vents look like right so if you go deep under the surface of the ocean on the on the to the bottom of the ocean you have these deep sea vents which are essentially uh uh manifestations of volcanic activity and uh, so what happens in these deep sea vents is that the temperatures are very very high like typically boiling point of water and you have all these gases that come out of the uh, surface of the uh of the ocean floor so you have sulfur you have methane and various other volcanic gases so all of this creates a very rich environment rich in chemicals very hot and surprisingly you have all this life that thrives over there and this is the kind of life that doesn't need sunlight because it gets energy from the heated water and all the chemicals so you have these uh, tube worms etc that live in these that thrive in these deep sea vents so it's a very specialized kind of life that lives there under the very high pressure of the of the ocean so that is another theory like you say of the origin of life that maybe life originated in deep sea vents and then moved upwards and spread to other parts of the of the planet so these are the two uh, theories that you're speaking about 
and it's it's possible both are uh, both are viable theories good theories that could possibly explain the uh, abiogenesis the origin of life out of chemicals with these with these energy sources etc available so they, that's what the two, two theories are and they are not quite similar of course the the they are similar in some ways and dissimilar in some ways so that's what these two theories are and we still don't know how life emerged we still don't have the exact uh, the exact answer the exact idea and we of definitely don't know where dna came from how does a molecule as complex as dna emerge because dna is what is at the foundation of all life on our planet whether it is we human beings whether it is dogs cats wolves elephants leopards butterflies insects fish microorganisms viruses bacteria whatever it is every single living being every single living cell has dna in it of course in the human body red blood cells don't have dna but apart from that right so so yeah so we don't have the answers as of today